Hi there, Chris from Totally EV, and today I'm joined with Mikaela Alin Kotelinski. She's a professional race driver and also a test driver for Extreme E, which you can see the car in the background. Mikaela, thank you so much for joining and taking time on this interview. Thank you for letting me, thank you for letting me be a part of it. It's really nice, and I, I love your background. I'm going to make sure to, uh, to get my own background <laughs> like that very soon. I would prefer your background, to be honest, because you've got a, a, a lovely kitchen in the background, so... <laughs> We'll, we'll go with that, but thank you. Um, so I'm just going to jump uh, straight in. And um, for those who might not know you um, in the, the racing scene, um, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and how, what got you into racing? Well, I'm 27 years old, come from Sweden. Uh, I come from Karlstad, which is pretty much the region where it's a lot of rallying and a lot of motorsport in Sweden. And I really grew up with motorsports surrounded by me. So my, my grandfather was a rally and racing driver. He actually won the Paris Dakar in 1980. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my mom was a rally driver. And then my dad was a rally driver. And my brother was a rally driver. So as you can see, everything was surrounded by motorsport in that way. Um, but honestly, from my side, I, I wasn't so interested in motorsport. I... Like the one of the World Rally Championships uh, events are in Karlstad. And usually every winter we go there, we have a look at the rallies. But I, when I was younger, I always stayed in the car because I thought it was just so boring to watch the rally cars. Um, but then my brother started to do go-karts. And um, I think he did one year of competing. And I tried it out. I was really not fast from the beginning. Like I didn't have full throttle on the streets. I was afraid, everything. But somehow I just found that it was fun. And I also realized after step by step that I got better, that hmm, I, th I think this is kind of fun and I want to continue. So yeah, that's, that's how it started. And then I continued driving. Uh, my brother tried to teach me how to drive. And I also remember very clearly one time my dad was coaching me and he said, because I was always spinning in the same corner. <laughs> and then he said, you know, you just break before the corner go off the brakes, turn, and then accelerate. And I looked at him and I was like, what do you mean? I don't get it. <laughs> so I didn't have the, the brightest start into my motorsport career, but I'm a very stubborn person. And I, once I, I head into something, I always give 100% to, to become good at it. And that's the same thing that I did with go-karts. Uh, so then after, in my second season, I won my first race. Which is amazing. That's a that's a great achievement. Um, and you know what? It, it, like in any in any sort of um, not even sports, but anything in life, if if you've got the determination, then then you can make it. So it's it's actually really good to hear about that and and the fact that obviously it runs in the family. And I was going to actually say, in terms of the family, is that what what your inspiration had? What your where you got your inspiration from? So from mum, dad grandfather brother mm. the, the whole family essentially driving is that where you got inspiration or was there other people that you kind of looked up to and um and you wanted to kind of be like them if that makes sense yeah i mean i would say because from the start since i wasn't interested at it at all from the start i didn't have any any role models that i was looking up to but once i started and once i got into the sport i really have to say that yeah of course my family has been a huge inspiration but it's also been um, a huge support to have my mom as close uh, to me and supporting me in the sport. Because in the end, it is different sometimes to be female in this world. And, and there's, been, there's been a lot of highs, but some lows as well. So to have her support and knowing that she's also been at the very top within motorsport. So it's been great to, to have someone to talk to, to you and that you can... Yeah, speak to uh, when needing guidance and, and so on. So um, she's been a, a big inspiration from my side. Which is great. And it's, it's nice to hear that, that you had that sort of relationship and mm. someone mm. similar, I guess, to you, but obviously in a, in a different time frame. So obviously times have kind of changed, I, I presume, in, in terms of motorsport. Um, have you, have yeah. you noticed a change since you've been a, a, a professional race driver? Have you seen kind of a shift? Yeah, I would definitely say that. So, I mean, in the end, I, I started to do touring car racing in 2012. And I remember I got, so we we're going to get team clothes and I just got male pants and male t-shirts and all those things. And it was issues like that. But in the end, you can really see a shift. And I would, I would say it's mainly the last 
two to three years, actually, that there's been a huge shift with really believing in female drivers and pushing for female drivers. Because in the end, that's because I often get the question, why is there no female racing driver in Formula One or in the top level series? Because you have to get the chance to become the fastest driver and the best driver. You have to have someone believing in you, giving you a great position so that you can um, you can develop, that you can be and earn the chance to, to come to the top level of motorsport. And that's what I see now that I see more more um, projects where are pushing for female racing drivers to come to the very top, look at FA Women in Motorsport. They have a project now called Rising Stars where they are looking for girls between I think 12 and 16 all over the world, just collecting them, uh, trying to get them to, to come to the very top of motorsport. And those initiatives, you can see that from the FA, you can see it from the manufacturers. And this is just great to see that the motorsport world are really pushing for female racing drivers to, to be the best and come to the top level in, in each different category. And that's also what I love about the decision from Extreme E, that yeah. they've now decided, yeah, to have female and male driver in each car. Absolutely. And so actually, what is your involvement in Extreme E? So you're a, you're a test driver for um, Extreme E and you're, gonna, you're also working with Continental. Um, give us a little bit of a background as to how that works and what, what actually is kind of like will, will be or currently is. I'm not sure how, how that works in terms of your day to day uh, job aside from you know, touring cars when it comes to Extreme E. How does that how does that pan out? Well, if, if we start with how it all started, the, the whole journey with Continental, it was actually that I had a cooperation with Continental Sweden. So I had it during 2018, being an ambassador for their brand in Sweden, because I work a lot as an instructor as well. So it's not only about driving quick on the tracks, it's also about learning how to drive safely on the tracks, but then also, of course, on the normal roads. And then the marketing chef told me that there's a really exciting project coming to Continental in 2019. And I think just a few weeks later, I got, I, I got a call from the, the Continental headquarters where they asked me if I wanted to be then the test driver for them for Extreme E. And in the end, when I heard about the whole story, the whole project and everything that was supposed uh, that is going to be done, I was just thinking, how is this going to be possible? It sounds just insane, extreme, insane. <laughs> but knowing that it was the people that were behind Formula E, because that's what people said then. When Formula E started, they said, what is this? It's not going to work out, but look at it now. And also knowing Continental, a very serious and um, determined co uh, company, then I felt, okay, this is going to be reality. So uh, the journey started then last year for the Extreme E. And we started to speak about the tires already before the car was there. So in the end, the car was presented at Goodwood mid of 2019, but the development of the tires already started way before that. Okay. So, and the first real testing we had then was in France uh, mid October last year. So that was the first time I really got to, to push the car to the limit, but also push the tires to the limit. And then we had Corona. Uh, so we, the plan was to do more testing this spring, uh, to have more time to, uh, to change and develop the tires. But in the end, Corona came, so we had to cancel testings. And therefore, I am so lucky and so happy that Continental has a lot of experience from off-road and 4x4 tires before uh, the Extreme E. Uh, that we got a lot of information from France uh, with me driving, but then also from other drivers giving feedback about the tires. And then um, we made a few changes uh, to the tires. And also really interesting to know is that it doesn't take you about a week to make a tire. In the end, you have to, it's called the molding of the tires. And to create this molding takes about three months. Wow. So to be able to create this molding, to create all the tires that will be needed for the Extreme E uh, series, you have to uh, be finished in, in May something. Uh, wow. So in the end, um, we, we've taken out a lot of the information that we could from the testing, uh, previous information from other testing with Continental, and I'm uh, feeling confident now for season one.
which is great. Actually, in, in terms of the tires, it's it's interesting because um, in your in, in your video segment that you had with Continental, it's it it really depends on terms of the torque because obviously the torque of these these cars, given they're all electric cars, it's it's massive, so it puts a lot of strain on the wheels. And then mm. when you're going around corners at speed, those tires are put under a lot of tension. Um, mm. Do you feel or did you well did you get to try different tires that Continental had for the Odyssey Twenty One, or was it only one set and then feedback and then there'll be another set at a later date? Um, we tested two different sets uh, when we were in France, but it wasn't a huge difference between the sets, uh, honestly. So it was more about giving the feedback. For example, now we have much stronger sidewalls, which we felt because in the end, it is it is a heavy car. Uh, there will be, like you say, because of the electrical driven car, a lot of forces into the tire, both when giving acceleration, but also side forces. So therefore, the sidewall is much stronger and robuster to also... Yeah, make sure that it can take all the forces and the loads because also um, the tires are not going to be just for one event. You're going to bring tires with you to the next events. And it's also going to be the exact same tires for each uh, event. So it's going to be different surfaces. Yeah. And in, uh, in, in that respect, then, will you be going to the different events as the test driver? Will you be partaking in the actual race events themselves? Or I know there is in terms of confirmation of who drives for what team, but does your involvement mean going to the events themselves or is it purely kind of like a development testing phase with Continental slash Extreme E? I really wish that I could answer to those questions now, <laughs> That's okay. but I can't, unfortunately. Okay. So uh, sorry to say that, but uh, I hope very soon to, to be able to, yeah, to tell about my, the plans for 2021. That's cool. And then, so going a little bit off Extreme E um, and actually talking about what's the favorite car that you've actually raced in? Because obviously Odyssey 21, it's not currently technically been racing. Like there is only mm. testing at this stage. So obviously your involvement in motorsports, you've got a variety of different experiences. What's the favorite car you've actually raced in and, and, and why is that? Which, mm. you know, which one would you choose? I mean, if I would say racing, otherwise, if you would have said the best car that are driven, I would say it's it's a mix between, or I would say it's either the Odyssey 21 because driving that one, knowing the the weight of the car and still be, it's so easy to handle. It's a big car. It's it's weight of the car, but it was just so easy to handle because of the because of the torque, the massive torque that you get as soon as you go on power. It's just so easy to control. But then also my the team that I'm racing for in the Touring Car Championship in Sweden, they also built a fully electric touring car. And that was also really cool to drive because, because you have the battery and you, you put the weight of the battery. So the car is just so well balanced. The weight is so low. So this was the closest that I came to driving a Formula car in a touring car. And, and also they're giving that acceleration. It's, um, it's something completely different. And every person that says that they are against electrical motorsport I mean, if they would just get into the car, drive it for one lap, they would be so convinced. They would know that, okay, this is just epic. <laughs> um, so, but I haven't raced an actual race in either of those cars. So if I would choose a car that I, I, I did rallycross back in 2014. No offense against all the racing cars that I've been driving. <laughs> uh, but I do thought it was really cool to drive the RX lights. Um, I think it's so fun to to do the jumping. You go over the jumps, you have full throttle. And uh, yeah, so I would say then actually the, maybe the rallycross car. Yeah, I guess that's, that's quite cool. Like going through different terrains, again, like kind of like Extreme E. You can be mm. literally there's, what well, if I'm not mistaken, a part in the stage where you get the highest jump and you get that little boost, kind of like the mm. fan boost or attack mode that there is currently mm. in Formula E. So exactly. that literally tells people jump higher, you get more power. <laughs> it's great. It's a, it's a great thing. Um, it's a competition within the competition. Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Which adds a little bit of a different dimension and something that's quite interesting. Now, um, now going back to the touring car championship, um, obviously that's what you're taking part in right now. The, the season is on the way. Um, I just have to kind of allude to the fact that, um, you were the first female driver in touring car history, which is crazy to think to actually win a race. Now, 
that's awesome. Um, but I just want to know like how that felt at the moment when you won um, and what it meant to you and how that's maybe impacted you going, going forward in these current races. I, speaking of it and, and going back to those memories, it just gives me, I think it's called the chills. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Cause it's, it was, it's definitely the, one of the biggest days in my career. Um, I had been struggling a bit the seasons before that. I, I'd been racing to and cross in Germany. I'd also won a race there uh, as the first female in a um, Volkswagen Schrocker R Cup. But then I had some tough, tough seasons and I wasn't sure actually if I was going to continue with racing. But then in 2018, with the team that I'm currently racing in as well, PWR, we just said, okay, let's build self-confidence up again. We know that the talent and the speed is there. We just have to get the package together. So we really took it step by step. Uh, and, and I remember on the last lap when I was leading and I, I kind of knew that, okay, I'm going to win this. My brother was watching there. He was at the race. And I remember thinking in the second last corner or something that, my brother is going to be so nervous now, uh, which is kind of funny that I had the time to think those thoughts. But when I crossed the finish line and, and we won, and that's also what I want to say, we won, because it was definitely a team effort. Yeah. Uh, they had worked so hard and I had worked so hard and together we, we won that race fair. It was not by, by luck or by chance. We, we were the, the best team that day. Uh, and it was just simply amazing but then afterwards seeing the, the impact that was afterwards that was also maybe even better because I've always been or often like I said before I get the question why is there so few female racing drivers and in the end I believe it's you have to see we have to have a role model you have to have someone that you can associate with and see that okay if she can do this I can do this as well and there was a lot of media attention. Uh, there was a lot of um, younger girls then being aware of that. If she can win, I can also win. If she can drive, I can also drive. And it also gave me a position in the championship where I was just a normal driver. I was just a driver winning and making results despite that I, or yeah, despite that I was a woman or female racing driver. So to see that so many people or younger girls got inspired to, to try out this sport and to see it as a easy thing to do, nothing that would stop them to do it just because they are just female uh, male drivers. That was, uh, that was a really nice um, yeah, impact after, after the win. And you were saying about confidence there, and that's a, it's a massive thing in motorsport because if you have the confidence, you can almost know you can do the overtake or you can, you know you can perform the, the move or even put your brake at just the very last moment. Even if it's one, like less than a couple of seconds, that mm. extra tenths of seconds could lead to you getting either a better lap time when it comes to qualifying or indeed a better position. So yeah, it's massive. And in terms of confidence, it's, it's great to see that that had a positive impact. Now, mm. in terms of, you were saying about aspiring female drivers like young female drivers there's this program as you said like throughout the world to try and draft them in um have you seen more female drivers reaching out to you um be it like personally or even at events and coming to you and being like have you got any tips and tricks i do actually uh last time was this thursday it was a girl that she's been following me on social media and um, i didn't know about that but she came to the track uh, or she got she actually called our team boss first, as if she could come to the track and have a visit. So we had a chat maybe for, for 15 minutes speaking about her dreams and what she wanted to do. And it was a very fine moment from my side because she was sitting in my car and she said that this was her dream that she wanted to do in the future. She did her first uh, go-kart race uh, this Sunday. Wow. So from my side, it was just so beautiful to see that, that she was there, that I could give her motivation and inspiration and hopefully that is something that will will uh, yeah give her strength and inspiration to to follow her dreams and if i can do something fine as that for for her and for other younger girls uh, i think that's that's amazing because like you said i had my mother that was my role model that could support me but not everyone has a mom that has been a professional rally driver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if I can be that person for other younger girls that, yeah, 
gives them motivation to follow their dreams. That's that's a, that's a huge thing for me. That's really nice to hear. Yeah, it's it's quite it's quite interesting because um, as a male, I would say that I'd be looking. So my my father mm. is a car mechanic, so I can look up to him and be like, oh, I like cars because of him, and I, I've kind of been in that and. It would, with females it's kind of different unless you've got a professional racing driver as in a mother who does a professional <laughs> racing driver it can be a yeah. little bit rarer to find it's not obviously not yeah. impossible it's a bit rarer to find but specifically when you're coming to that level of motorsport it's not just like myself driving a car in around town you're driving cars around the track that's that's a completely different level um mm. and it does take someone to say you can do it and also like in almost in terms of the safety aspect as well you know some people you know mothers or fathers will be a little bit protective and be like oh mm. we don't want you driving doesn't matter about your gender they'll be like i don't know you know don't want you being in that environment so no it, it's it's really good that you can be that role model for either you know, the future generation of race drivers or even the current generation as you said that uh, lady came up to you do you know actually how yeah. it happened what what happened in the race that she had on sunday do you know the result i, I don't know actually because i wrote to her I, I told her to to write to me on instagram so she did and then i said good luck for the race and i hope you had a good race but i haven't gotten any answer yet okay but, yeah Maybe maybe it was a good race and she's just basking in joy right now. Who knows? And she's like, it's a great thing. I hope so. I hope, I hope so, so, yeah. Well, um, that that's that concludes the, the interview, Michaela. So thank you basically so much for taking time and outlining a variety of different things. Um, really appreciate Thank you for letting me be a part. Oh, no, no. That, honestly, it's the, the pleasure is ours, the viewers, and obviously for myself to actually take time. Uh, obviously, in your busy schedule, you've got a lot lots in front of you bit from extreme e to to, to the um, touring car championship it's just you've got so much on so i very much appreciate that awesome. and, thank um, you yeah i'm really looking forward it's nice that everything is getting started now with with the touring car is to see with extreme e so i've really got a exciting autumn ahead of me we can't wait to follow your your journey and then obviously you're on instagram so make sure um if some people are watching this video make sure you check out in the description below for your social media links and to keep up with your your racing and and developments uh, be it in extreme or in the championships you're part, part taking in so yeah thank you so much for your time Michaela. thank you